All right, so this is my speed run of the Hollow Knight beta. Right away, you'll notice some subtle differences. Like instead of falling into King's Pass like normal, we spam pause and unpause and simply float onto the ceiling of the room and casually make our way over to the door leading to Dirtmouth. Once we're there, we don't even need to break the door open because we're already on the other side of it. So we just need to touch the load zone and we're out of King's Pass. Now, probably the biggest difference with the Hollow Knight beta is the existence of the backdash. Now, backdashing in Hollow Knight is probably the worst thing ever, because in the pre-release, there's no input buffering at all. So if you do an action one frame too early, nothing happens. So to avoid that, you have to mash the button. And because backdashing makes you move faster, you spend this entire playthrough just mashing backdash, and it's definitely not the most comfortable thing to do. So look closely during this drop and you'll see the nail is actually a lot faster and shorter range. I'm just swinging it to avoid landing onto the blobbles because if I get hit, I get like a full second worth of freeze frames. And the reason for that is just because the beta performs really poorly. Now, because of the shorter range, the Aspid Arena is more challenging. The Aspid spawns are a bit different, so you can't do the double spike kill, but I AI manipulate the one on the left to go into the spike. And I do what's called a super slide off the gate. Just to give a really quick explanation, super sliding is when you pause the game while you have knockback, and the game just continues to give you knockback as long as the game's paused. I tried to get a super slide off the gome too, but I missed the time. I mean, it actually is super precise, but if you hit the super slide, it saves a lot of time. You'll notice this room looks very different. That's because this is the Zote room. So yeah, you can jump up onto that platform, fight the Vengefly King, and save Zote in Forgotten Crossroads. So yeah, big sad moment. You cannot pogo the statue in the Hollow Knight beta, so we have to wait for that Vengefly to fly a little bit to the right and pogo off the Vengefly instead. But this room is pretty straightforward. We're just obviously making our way over to to false knights. You can see the room is just, it has some subtle differences. Uh, you really want to avoid getting hit by these husks because of course you take a million years of freeze frames if you do. And I don't know if you've noticed, but you only start the game with four health in the beta because apparently five was too much and <laughs> you can just easily backdash into these enemies by accident because there's freeze frames at the end of the backdash. So it's very easy to just get hit at the end of one. And yeah, we can kill false knight pretty quickly because we we effectively start the game with quick slash equipped. The shorter nail range does make it really tricky to stay in range while you're doing each hit, especially with the recoil. And yeah, we have to damage tank through False Knight's tantrum because we have to full kill False Knight. There's no shortcut out of the arena like there is in the base game. Also, normally you can get a couple heals in whenever you down False Knight, but in this version of the game, its head comes out a lot faster. So because you're not able to heal up, your health often dips down to one at this point, but as long as you survive, you can just heal up to full, easy peasy. So we're just going to drop down and finish off the boss. You'll notice that False Knight does not drop City Crest in the beta, which makes sense because we can't even get to Fungal Wastes. There's a little explosion of Geo, which we're going to ignore because we don't need to spend any money in this speedrun. So we're just going to casually backdash out of the room. One of my favorite things about playing the Hollow Knight beta was all the subtle differences. Like, for example, there's some extra ledges here on this platform that were removed from the final Final game. But why were those ledges removed? What was wrong with them? What was Team Cherry's thought process? The world will never know. But yeah, we're just casually backdashing into Ancestral Mound to collect Vengeful Spirit. But a very harsh reality of playing Hollow Knight is awaiting us. And that's because soul generation in the Hollow Knight beta works very differently. In the final version of the game, each hit gives you 11 soul and it costs 33 soul to cast a spell. In the the Hollow Knight beta, each hit gives you five soul and it costs 50 soul to cast a spell. So we're looking at about three times more hits required to cast a single spell in the Hollow Knight beta. We're going from three hits to 10 hits. There's also no quick cast key, so casting spells tends to be a little bit slow. And if you know the layout of the map, you might guess why this is about to be a big problem. The Hollow Knight beta ends when you enter Green Path. And in order to get to Green Path, we're going to need to kill two Elder Baldurs. To help with the soul collection, we're going to lure these two Vengeflies into the arena. Just cause, you know, having to wait for the Elder 
Alder Balder to spit four little Balders to proceed takes a little bit too much time. So we cast two Fireballs at the Elder Balder, which takes all our soul, and luckily we get a first spit. Now the Elder Balder can't spit out two Balders at once, so a Balder, a Fireball, and then another Balder is actually perfect RNG. So because so much of this run is just determined by the crazy Balder RNG at the end, this is suddenly an insane pace. Now in this room, you'll notice I actually touched this ledge before falling all the way down, and the reason is because in the Hollow Knight beta, you get the landing stun from long falls quicker than in the final release. Definitely a good change because getting stunned whenever you fall is not the most enjoyable thing. Now remember, we only get five soul per hit, so in this room, we're going to need to hit a ton of enemies in order to get a full bar of soul. It's actually kind of comical. We have to kill like pretty much every enemy in this room just to get enough soul to cast two fireballs. And I can't understate how tricky it is to kill enemies quickly when you have like no nail range at all, but we persevere and make it through and we're about to see what kind of Baldur RNG we get. Now people who do normal Hollow Knight speedruns hate Baldurs for how random they are, and they only have to wait for one Balder Spit. Each Balder Spit is a 50-50, so it's just a coin toss. At this point, I've got two Balders. I'm waiting for two more. There's the third, and I'm just going to wait for it to spit another Balder. And it's not, and there's the final Balder. You just need one hit on the last one. And we're making our way to the end of the beta. Do not fall in the acid. That loses like 20 seconds because the game just freezes. It's time once we see the prompt after entering the room, and... That's the world record for the Hollow Knight beta speedrun. And now I'll leave you to enjoy my reaction on stream. Let's fucking go. Crazy run. <laughs> the beta is pretty short, yeah. <laughs> I feel like a keyboard runner would have a pretty big advantage being able to use keyboard to dash without, like I'm using keyboard to dash and like, moving with the controller and jumping with the controller. And it's super awkward. Backdashing with the trigger button is just not happening. It requires too much like spamming. My finger would die in like five seconds. So that's like a 631, maybe a 632. If I retime it. Wait, why is it not working? I can't backdash anymore? <laughs> it's not letting me backdash. Oh, well, that's a glitch. Yeah, you could probably rebind using software because that, that's actually legal in normal speedruns, so. It would definitely be allowed in this. Finishing the beta removes the ability. Yep, that's your reward. So I guess we just go for the 2x. We've already shaved a minute and 31 seconds off the previous world record before we started stream. Absolutely insane. Missed the world record, don't worry. We're about to get another one.